This conference will now be recorded. All right, guys, so we'll call this meeting to order. Um, all times on this agenda are approximate. Consideration of items may require more or less time than is scheduled. Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. The public body may combine two or more agenda items for consideration, and the public body may remove an item from the agenda or delay discussion relating to an item on the agenda at any time. Public comment is designated for discussion only. The public has the opportunity to address the commission on any matter not appearing on the agenda. However, no action may be taken on any matter raised until the matter itself has been specifically included on the agenda as an item upon which action may be taken. Additionally, public comment may be heard on any item listed on the agenda. Persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any agenda item at the Lander County Commissioner's Board meeting. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person at the discretion of the commission. Please note that the public body may interrupt the open meeting and exclude the public for the purpose of having an attorney-client discussion of potential and existing, uh, existing litigation, which is pursuant to NRS 241.0153B2. So I'll call the meeting to order. Patsy, would you lead us in the pledge? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have a moment of silence. Lander County Commissioners may break for lunch from 12 p.m. to 1.15 p.m. Any agenda item may be taken out of order, may be combined for consideration by the public body, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. Commissioners reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. We'll start with you, Patsy. Um, thank you. No, I don't, but I do have an ACO meeting tomorrow, so we'll report next time. Okay. I do not. Okay. Jeff? I have nothing to report. Mike? I don't okay, good. We'll move into staff reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. Any staff reports? Okay. We'll move into public comment for non-agenda items only. Is there a public comment? Okay, we'll move into our consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be acted upon by the Board of County Commissioners with one action, without extensive discussion. Any member of the Board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda, discussed, and acted upon separately during this meeting. Consent agenda materials are available at the Lander County Clerk's Office for viewing, and copies are available for a nominal charge. Uh, one, approval of August 24th, 2023 agenda notice. Two, approval of August 10th, 2023 meeting minutes, and three, approval of payroll change request. We're gonna to need to pull item one because it was worded incorrectly. It's worded on the agenda as June 30th, 2027, but it should read August 31st, 2026. I didn't receive any minutes. Did you have I minutes? I didn't receive any either. No. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the consent agenda, which will be number three. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? second? Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And do we have a motion on one? So we amended? We're amending what part of the agenda? Uh, where it reads the date, so it's item three, where it reads the date June 30th, 2027. It's supposed to read August 31st, 2026. Is that correct? I'll make a motion we approve the amended agenda. Okay. A second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, and I'll abstain from it. Okay, so we're going to move to item one. Commissioners, uh, for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove payment of bills, we're going to pull check number 220873. Patsy, do you have any checks on this one? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. You all make a motion we approve the remainder of the bills. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I'll also make a motion that we approve uh, check number 220873. Okay. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, and I abstain from it. It's made to my employer. 
So we'll move into item two uh, for discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the renewal of the interlocal contract between the State of Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health DPBH Community Health Services Program and Lander County. Okay. Do we have a Do we have a representative with the state here? I believe Nicole is on. Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Brisa Virgin, and I'm also with uh, Community Health Services. Okay, so um, is there, are there any questions from the board here? Okay, so I, I do have some questions, uh, and they're probably, Bill, probably directed towards you uh, somewhat. And then, uh, so the first one is on page 513 of the contract, item 21 which is federal funding. In the event federal funds are used for payment of all or part of this contract, the parties agree to comply with all applicable federal laws, regulations, and executive orders, including without limitation, the following, and it lays it out. So my concern is that, number one is, do we have any say in whether or not we accept those federal grants? Because when you accept those federal grants, there's gonna be strings attached, and I don't know if it necessarily, um, would uh, it might not be something that every one of these board members up here might be in favor of so that would be my first question we, <clears throat> because i don't um, want to sign something to where we're, I, we're, we're basically that's what we're doing and that you know that kind of i i get your concern um, the problem is that as a practical matter the federal government knows how big it is and it doesn't move so um you, is that a basis that you could decide to reject the contract? Yeah, are you going to get another contract without that in it? Probably not. Because the state, if they're using federal funds or if they decide they want to, they're, they're going to do that. They'll, they'll figure something else out. I mean, you're going to cause a, a problem. My experience tells me, and I think your common sense tells you that they don't move well and then I, I do agree with what you're saying but that's why I had, I had stated would we have the right to not accept those funds but what you're saying is if the state were but the to problem is the that's state the, problem. the state if they're agreeing to it we're kind of strapped by what they're agreeing to when we might not, not necessarily correct. agree with that correct well, I need you to read that statute is Dr. Ross on <clears throat> Dr. Ross is supposed to be on the phone this was just sent to me okay Dr. Ross, are you on the phone? He was in clinic today, so he might. Okay. I told him it might he be around He usually puts his name, and he's no, I don't see his name. So unless he's one of these callers, he needs to unmute I'll, himself. I'll email him really fast, because I told him around 9.15. And I did text him, too. So that's my concern, is that we have a state agency that can accept money that affects our county directly that we would have no say over. So that's, that's my concern. Okay, so what's the I point? don't know that we did this exemption, so Dr. Ross can speak to I just wanted you to read it. <clears throat> but is that um, clause in there for if we're paying for the contract amount with federal funding? Because we're not. I don't know. It's just it's page five of thirteen. Yeah, I don't think we did it. It's just like for payment. Of, I don't think we did it. It's for payment of all or part of this contract. I think we need to go over the attachment too with the scope of work and the services. Yeah, and I'll get to that. Okay. Some questions in that. Okay. Well, so. so, anyway, that's my concerns. So I'll just voicing them. Um, and then. Um, he said he's dialed in but muted. He needs to unmute himself. Does he know what caller he is? Hold on. Tell him he can speak. Yeah. Can you hear me? Got it. Yep, we can hear you. Hold on. Muted. Unmuted. Okay. Sounds like I'm unmuted. Dr. Ross, did you did you uh, hear my question or my concern on the, it was 21 of the contract? <clears throat> no. You keep that for me. Did he say no? No. He said no. So basically <laughs> my concern was that, um, hold on. So basically, it's uh, saying that if we accept federal funding, then we're going to be held to the standards because of somewhat grant money. So the problem, or the question that I had was that if the state 
agrees to this, it's going to affect the county directly, and we're, go we're going to have no say in it. Can we be fine with funds? Pardon? Can we be fine with funds? Yeah. Sure, I don't know what those uh, the provisions would be, and, and I can tell you that the only thing that I know of now that is in that category would be the vaccinations that we're getting. Yeah. Brian, Brian, if it makes you feel any better, that if it makes you feel any better, we've already agreed on fe several federal contracts, you know, and we have to abide by almost anything I can think that could possibly come down the pike anyway. Um, you're kind of stuck already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll move on. Next question I have is um, under the scope of work. So my first uh, question is to you, Brandy. So is the scope of work being fulfilled since you're working with, uh, you know, day-to-day -day on this? I don't have any contact with the state of Nevada as far as these community health services go. So I'm curious to kind of go through them and see how they're providing these services, if they're providing them in the background somewhere with the state. But like for me, I'm not in contact with them regularly for any of these services. Um, Dr. Ross did send over the NRS that's associated with this just a minute ago that says that in order for us to step out of this, you guys would have had to request that. We, we so when we went it. from the state public health to the county public health nurse, we would have had to ask for an exemption from this, okay. is how he's reading it. Okay. So he asked if the county asked okay. for that exemption, and yeah. I'm not aware if they did or not. I don't think so. So, so is it still applicable? Is that something we could still do? Or? I don't know. I would it, hope so. From what I read, yeah, we would have oh, asked, I think, the governor's office mm -hmm. for an exemption. Yeah, because under the scope of work 1.8 invoices and updates, it lays out yeah. uh, they'll be providing monthly invoices, they'll provide biannual reports to include revenues collected, services provided for the county for public health services, we'll provide necessary updates at county commissioner meetings, county board health meetings, and venues requested by the county. I can't even recall ever having an update. No, no, I'm not, no, I think they need to kind of go through all these and tell us how they are providing these services, because they're not. Okay. Let's get to practical stuff and, here. And I would if you want to see an audit of what they've provided in the past under this contract to verify that, that the county is receiving that level of service for the price that, that's being paid. I don't think that, <clears throat> that that's happening. Well, Breeza's on the phone. She's the program manager, so she might be able to speak to some of that. I think I got three of them on there, Breeza, Heather, and Nicole. Breeza's trying to talk. All right, well. Couple things. Hi, to keep good in morning. Mind. You could, Rachel, are you able oh, to hear yes. me? One second, please. You could okay. table this and we could look into it and bring it back. Um, although it's supposed to already be in effect because it starts July 1st. Um, you have the 30 day termination, so you could also go ahead and approve the contract. And then later, if you want to renegotiate it, you can, you know, with their knowledge that you have that 30-day termination and you could hold that over their heads to see if they'll agree to the changes. So however you want to do it, um, as a practical matter, I think, yes, we could look into it some more. Um, I, I asked the federal stuff. I, no, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm yeah. tracking with you on the federal stuff. So, um, so go ahead on the phone. Good morning. Um, my name is Brisa Virgin, and for the record, and I'm the I'm one of the health program managers here at Community Health Services. Um, to answer your, you know, to kind of reflect on some of your questions. So, um, <clears throat> section 1.8, as you mentioned, the invoice and update. I mean, really, um, as the county sees the community, you know, your communities having a need within the communities. Um, so, if you need support from us, such as food clinics, or in the case of an like or such, then this is this is definitely something that we would um, be able to that you would coordinate with our nursing supervisor Tammy, um, and she would she is definitely the point of contact for arranging these types of services within the community. And as we support these services and such, then we also of course um, provide these uh, reports and um, and and this um, the invoices are sent monthly. Um, <clears throat> And I, and, and I also have a poll here with me if there's any additional questions as well. I think she's saying if they were asked to provide any services, then they would give a 
Put your hold on. Um, yeah, I know. I'm having a hard time hearing him on the, the phone system. Um, so, I mean, listening to Brandy that works with them on a day to day, I mean, if we're in a contract that is not being fulfilled to what the contract is saying, my, my question would be why do we need the contract? So, I don't know if uh, our counselor basically said that we could defer the item and then maybe um, have staff work with Brandy to find out if it's something that's even really needed and wanted, and if it's not. And to look into this NRS that we just received regarding mm -hmm. exemptions yes. and applying yes. for so possibly the That's exemption. what I would like to see happen. Um, what are your guys' thoughts or feelings about that? Yeah. Are we receiving invoices? Yeah, they send us monthly invoices. <clears throat> For this contract, that because we're already we were already in it. We were. It's just a monthly a monthly payment that is associated with this contract. Yeah, we just pay it. So they send us a monthly invoice, and I think right now it's five hundred and six dollars a month. And this is like four hundred and sixty or something. Four sixteen, because this one's a longer a longer. So, so honestly, um, so I, this is Brandy. I'm the community health nurse here in Battle Mountain. So I guess my question for you is: This contract saying if you provide these services, or is it saying that you're currently providing these services for us? Hi, um, this is Brisa Bridgen. And for the record, um, to to kind of answer that, so this this is really the county assessment is something that is um, supported by NRS. 439.4905 um, and and, and these, these inner locals are you know really established to be able to support the, these communities as they see the need um, and so so this is really like you know if you know something happens but these assessments is still is still a fee that is occurring on a monthly basis okay <clears throat> um. That's what I but at present, this is Dr. Ross. Yes. At present, Lander County isn't receiving the services laid out in the scope of work of this contract. I understand that that, that allows for access to those services, but they're, they're not needed and they're not they haven't been provided. <clears throat> right? What did what did Dr. Ross? They haven't been providing <clears throat> the services. So the services in the contract. <laughs> They're not needed. I can definitely Hold on, excuse me. We have somebody to, talking. Um, I think he said that they're not needed and they haven't been provided. Correct. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Sorry. Um, we can. I can definitely um, defer this to Nicole, who's our senior um, health program manager, and Tammy, um, our, our nursing supervisor, as well. What did she say? To okay. Nicole and Tammy. Though. So that's what yeah, I think. That's fine. We'll maybe have uh, staff get with you, Brandy, yep. so we can just really look at it because, yeah. I mean, you deal with it on an Absolutely. everyday basis. I'm totally fine with that. And we're just seeing that if the contract is yeah. actually something that we need. So okay. let's we'll go cool ahead and divert the item. Okay. You guys good with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Well, thank you on the phone. And we're going to move on. Thank you. Time. Uh, we're going to jump two items ahead real quick. Uh, just I want to make sure we get to them before Mike leaves. Um, we're going to jump to item 10, update from our public works director, uh, Don Prince, including but not limited to past, current, and future public works director. Oh, sorry. Yeah, public works director Don Prince, including but not limited to past, current, and future projects. Don? Yeah, sorry about that. Good morning. Good morning, Commission. Um, got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I was over at Well Six yesterday. They finished up. They're finishing up putting the building around the treatment plant over there. Um, we're hoping to have that online by the sometime the end, towards the end of next month. Um, the forest main lift station going on out here at the Indian Colony. Um, they were supposed to get the power start working on the power last week, but they had some big other problem going on, so they had to reschedule. So now they're talking. It'll be the middle of September, I believe they said. Three, or the third week in September, they'll be back to put the power in over there. But other than that, that's what we're waiting on over there. Um, the crack sill project, we finished it up. 
Now we're doing the Cape Sill, and we're 50% done with it, and we're hoping to be done by uh, the first part of September. Um, safe routes, it's an ongoing project, and it's looking good over there. If you guys drove around over here um, in the Echo Bay section, it's looking really good. And then the auction, the public surplus auction, we've sold over $60,000 worth of surplus so far. Nice. Good job, guys. But, so nice seeing that yard cleaned up. Yes, there's a lot of stuff, and we still got a lot of stuff coming in. So and but, that'll be a continual thing, it, right? It is, so yep. Something that, yeah. Uh, right now we're working on Austin's yard, uh, getting it cleaned up, but as new things come up, we'll be able to put those on, and actually, whether we Kelly Blue book them or get a better price when we sell it, because it is newer, as we take things offline, we'll actually make more money in the long run. Cool. Um, is that your update, Don? Yep, that's pretty what, much uh, it. So. I know we had some, uh, well, the state did, with some road issues out Kingston Way. Did you go out there and look at that? No, that was actually past the county line. Oh, there. it was? Okay. Yep, that was in Knight County. It wasn't far past the county line, but apparently they just put this culvert in. It was a heavy concrete culvert, and I had a gush of water come through there and just washed it out. You could still see the writing on the culverts. It was brand new. So. Wow. Yeah, I seen some pictures. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. So how long was the road down? They had it. It opened up to one lane that night. So, uh -huh. well, that's pretty hard to stick culvert in when you got water rush through it. You got to get a piece of equipment to hold it down. Actually, when you're covering it, so yeah, exactly. it's hard work. All right. Well, uh, are there any questions I from the board? Okay. Well, the D the power company, so, Brian, will you yep. open up my? Comment. Well, yeah, so we're, yeah, oh. well, that's our next yep. item, so oh, okay. we'll, we'll keep the yep, yep. projects and stuff. that was given to me on the, the road work out on the hilltop area, um, it was complimented how, how aggressive, basically, if it was at your direction, they went at it, the, the resident went into the home and pulled down the road, and, uh, he said there was about 15 dump trucks and said they scooted right through. He said they were very polite, professional. So, like I said, at your direction. This cape seal they're doing out there, it's it's usually a fast process and it gets people in and out of their homes a lot faster. And so that's what the comp that's what the compliment to you was was I mean it, it moves it moves very fast and they 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 were pretty satisfied. They of course they didn't watch you know, any information on going out that mm -hmm. we talked about it, you know, that it was covered in the media and so on and so forth. So they, they were unaware when they yeah. pulled in their driveway. But no, they said it looks really good. And driving around out there, kudos for that, that turn off awesome. that, that you guys installed. Very well done. So thank you. Thanks for what you do. What, uh, any other questions? Perhaps you can. What, how is uh, Hilltop? Did we finally get that open back up and that all corrected? Yes. Any yep. Questions? It's a... Uh, they had to re remove move the road actually from really? one side of the canyon to the other in spots. Yes, uh, okay. well, there's a lot of water through there. You got to drive up there and look at it. Yeah, so. it's nice. We go over the top. Yeah. Really right. Well, thank you, Don. Yep. Okay, we'll jump to item 11. Uh, update from the Rec Center Manager Sean Baker, including but not limited to past, current, and future projects and or events. Okay, I'm going to run through this and then we'll get to that, oh, Kathy. Right. If you're good with that. Um, so first off, we had a lot of uh, sports camps this year between wrestling camp, swim camp, soccer camp. Um, in October, there's a diamond training softball camp. We've had no less than 40 kids in each camp, up to 60 to 80 kids in each camp. So it's doing pretty good. Um, we held 18 swim lesson classes this summer starting in April. We taught over 150 local kids how to swim. Um, part of the philosophy is that the more kids we teach how to swim, less uh, kids the guards have to save, right? So the more swim lessons we do, the more kids that swim, easier for our job. Um, we also taught Eureka youth uh, swim lessons. Eureka bust their kids over and we taught them swim lessons. Um, the Renown Fitness Court, the grand opening, was the biggest one Renown has seen. Thank you, Brian, for speaking and Patsy for showing up. It was very good. Um, Ball Fest is in the Elkhurst Park, October 21st. We're going to have pumpkin paintings face paintings and scarecrow building for the kids. Uh, the Civic Center cameras are being installed. Um, the the couple cameras are back ordered, but we should see that project done within the next couple weeks. Um, so the week of the September 4th, the Rec Center will be closed for our annual floor maintenance just for that week. The Rec Center employees will go join with Public Works on different projects around town. I talked to Rita about the Austin Courthouse and having some uh, employees go up there and help her with that. I know we're coordinating with Rick down there mm -hmm. on getting that done too. 
Um, so next week we are going to finish putting in the basketball hoops at Lions Park and the sports complex and pouring the concrete. During the week of the 4th, the Stripers will be here to put in the basketball courts along with redoing the rec center courts, but we are going to stripe the grounds for basketball courts with the basketball hoops. Uh, the tennis court is still scheduled to be done this fall, which the Stripers will have to come back out to restripe that, but Honeywell is still scheduled to get that done this fall. Um, the Austin sign is up and running. Uh, it is tied to the ambulance barn computer down there and my computer in my office. Once we get them trained down there, they'll be able to handle it. But until then, most of it's being controlled from the computer in my office because we know how to run the program. Any questions with that, Patsy? No, I was just going to say um, my congratulations to you on the renown opening. Uh, it was very well planned and the competitiveness was really fun to watch. So I'm glad Renown commented on that because you did one heck of a job. Yes, they, they were pretty good. And I thank you guys. It turned out really good. It's actually a very good addition to our park. Um, back to part of the smell and the reason for the pool and the rec center. We're going to get into an MB Energy update and some power issues they're having. So MB Energy tomorrow is bringing in a portable subunit to hook up to town. Um, they will be taking off the substation by the Colt offline um, anywhere between three days to by next Friday. There will be another power outage. Right now they can't control the power in town so we can't turn on all our equipment in the pool. So we can't disperse the moisture in the room out. The dehumidifier, the computer in the dehumidifier won't allow bad power to go through the building. So the troublemen have been running around trying to control power as best they can, but there will be a portable unit. We just met with Dan a couple hours ago. Uh, the next outage will be about six hours, um, and that's if everything goes right. So there will be another outage between now or the next three days and next Friday. So once I know a little more, and they are bringing in an extra portable unit just in case. So worst case scenario, if this doesn't fix power issues in the problem. There will be multiple power outages for the next three weeks as they convert town to a new power system. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, the portable holds and it's going to take them, they will be able to take the next three years to start swapping things over. That's the best case because no one's going to know anything's happening. So that's where we're at with MB Energy and the power and part of the reason for the rec center dehumidifier and stuff being down. So is it going to everything on this side of the freeway, or is it everywhere? No, it's just everything north of I-80. Okay. Does that include Hilltop, too? Nope. No. Just the same power outage, same power issues. Um, this new portable, though, if it comes online, they will hook up more of town to run through it as they take things offline. Okay. Okay. Is it anything for time for the power outage? Four to six hours. Four to six hours. And we'll, I, once I know, I will post and get the info out. But right now, they know the next three days, that they will have the next three days to get it in. And then after that, it'll determine how far along they are to hook it up. Okay. Any other questions? Any public uh, questions or comments on the issue? Ryan, I have one. Yes, sir. Uh, is it going to be during the day or at night when they shut us down? They're going to do it at night again. At night? Be the same? Yep. Six, whatever. Yep. Just a quick question on the Austin tennis court, in case anybody's on the line um, for an update on that. We've uh, went in and did some patching on it, and right now they're in the process of putting and paint, painting it down, and it's actually sealing the concrete, and that's probably something we should have did a long time ago because it is sucking the paint up really hard, and we got to get more paint. So, but it's uh, they started on it; they're about a quarter of the way. No, they're not even a quarter, about an eighth of the way done. And so, but it, we're going to get it painted. Then after we get it painted, then we'll get the stripers back in. And it should be good to go after that. And I think it needs, what, some new baskets too? So they yes. have those. Yes. Um, so Rick's uh, modifying something to make sure the new baskets go up properly. Uh, with the paint, though, does, they're probably not going to be done for the week of September the right. 4th. So when they come back to do our tennis courts, we'll schedule them to do the Austin tennis court then too. For, to the put striking. the lines in. You yes. mean for the yep. pickleball and stuff mm -hmm. yep. like that? Yep. But it is scheduled, so okay. it, it won't you. fall through the cracks. It'll get done. It just won't get done in September. It'll probably be, be a little later, another so. month or so. So. It's a lot of area to paint. Okay. Any other questions? John, thank you as well for yeah. what you did.
Thanks. Thank you. My nephew came over. My nephew's son came over. It's a sweet. He was allowed to come over to Carla. He stayed with us for the weekend. He loved it. Yes. I mean, he just listened every day to tell you, you know, when I walked through <laughs> the door to tell me what, what they learned. And Thank you. That's cool. Um, and it's something that one of the renowned ladies told Brian and I, I mean, the rec center is becoming pretty much the focal point of a lot of events in town and community involvement. So it is definitely a great facility and it's doing great things. And it seems like the kids are using it too. Yeah, yeah more and, and more. I mean, they just see more and more usage of it. So it, it's advertised where it's getting out. So thank you. I mean, it, it's definitely a service that helps the youth. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, we'll be going back to the regular scheduled agenda here. So we're going to go back to number three. I'm going to read this item into the record, but then I'm going to have uh, J.R. Thomas, our vice chairman, take it over, and I won't be having any discussion on the item just because of the conflicts with my wife. She's volunteered with High Desert Education in the past, and there could be uh, potential, she could potentially be working for Kim in the future. So I just want to disclose that, and I will be abstaining from any discussion on the issue. Before, so, before we do, yeah, go ahead and read it in. That's okay. Yeah. So for discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove, renewing this, the lease agreement between Lander County and High Desert Education Association located at 315 South Humboldt Street. This is a three-year lease ending on August 31st, 2026. Jer, you can take it over. Uh, yes, I, I do have a disclosure um, on that also uh, because I have uh, been involved personally and business-wise with Kim for some time. However, I have nothing to do with the school and no financial arrangements there. So, Counselor, does that mean I can still? You've disclosed it. I think you could still vote Okay, because I, I have no financial or interest in yeah. that particular item. Bill, let me okay. ask you that. With, with what my stated uh, conflict was, I should abstain from any discussion or voting on the issue, correct? There could be monetary gain. There hasn't been, but there could be in the future. So, okay, all right. Just wanted to make sure. Jar. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. Will you give us an update on it? Sure. Yes. So let me. We've, we've been at this for about two years now, and we've been we've been successful. We feel really good. Where we've where we've come for the last two years. Um, I've had several people ask me why we were coming in a year ahead, and I can address that simply by there, if there is or is not an appetite to extend the current contract, that gives us a full year to uh, solicit and find a new location, if that was to come to pass, because we don't have an abundance of locations that would be appropriate we wanted enough time as we were doing our planning for this next year to know if that was something we needed to address or not worry about. So that was the reason we are coming in um, this far ahead. Um, so however that falls, that's, that's the reasoning. Um, we have, in our success, we have, we have had uh, good opportunities to be of service to the community. Um, we have our coat drives. We've done food drives. We have interacted with the senior center. We've done cleanup days in the park. So we have had good opportunities for the kids and the families to give back to the community, uh, which was something that we stated in the beginning that we wanted to make sure occurred. Thank you. Of course. Do you have any more comment on the uh, agreement? I, I have some questions. Um, so under the page one of six, under titles, um, Leonard County was authorized to lease the property to the nonprofit charitable or civic organization pursuant to NRS 244.2835. Um, under that code, um, I'd like to request, I, I, I haven't seen it, um, that the, if 1A states that it's proven that they're a 501c3. I'd just like proof that that's received. I have, I have put that on file. Okay. The IRS correspondence was okay. delivered. Okay, I just seen uh, the, the initial submittal. Yes. Um, so that is, and then Bill, on that 1C, um, is it, are we in any legal obligation with that statement that it can be, this, that we can do what we're doing if they're providing a service 
that the county cannot provide. Is that a conflict with? Do we have to put an exemption in for that into the contract? Because the way I read it is, are, are we are we putting ourselves out there by providing it as a dollar, or does it need to go to what we decide is a fair market value? I don't think the fact that you've got other provisions would stop this sort of thing. I mean, if let's just pretend we were Las Vegas and we have more than one hospital, and we're you know funding the hospital. Um, obviously, we can fund more than one hospital because we could use more than one hospital. Same goes with schools. So um, I don't. I would like to note that we are not a school. We are a membership association, and we do not define ourselves as a school. Yeah, I was um, about to go into that as yeah. well, but. And we do not have teachers. We have education leaders. Um, the family members actually direct and uh, guide all the activities that we do. And then under some of the contract on the maintenance, uh, is it is it normal we do to where we cover? Uh, I see the cleaning piece. Would that would that be a part of the contract that we always provide? The, if it was any service, if it was the uh, frontier coalition or anything, if they were to use that building, would we provide the you know the maintenance, the parking lots, everything like that? Is that just normal? Yes, for yeah. the county building. Okay. And we actually do all the all the interior cleaning. We do a hard clean on the building once a week and actually just had a professional cleaner come in uh, a couple weeks ago and do a little deeper clean. So we do take um, serious pride in making sure we're caring for the building. We also did install, we had um, some parents uh, get smoke detectors uh, from the fire department and um, maintenance did just verify the, uh, they're all in good working order. So they're, uh, we have we have done that as a service to the building as well. And then I was going to ask, I, I, did, I wish Bert was here, this might be questions that we do have some time. Um, is our, is the fire system up to code? Have we, have we made them as, I mean, we've got kids in there and, and, and adults as well. I mean, have we updated and made sure, so I'll say state certified to make sure that the services, that that building for our liability needs to be provided? That would be a question for Colt and Glenn, but I do believe that Glenn's gone over there multiple times working on that. Okay. His fire systems are state. Correct. Well, you know, went through all of that. Just, here, so yeah. I'm just asking to make sure on our end for liability yeah. purposes that, yeah. that we're covered. And Glenn does come check fire. You know, I mean, does the state inspector come? I'm not there? involved in that piece, but I know Glenn comes in, checks all our fire extinguishers and everything. And, so, and, and the elevators. Glenn is our anyway. maintenance guy. He's maintenance could, could for the county. Check, could, would, can I request yes. that we check that to make sure that we're providing our requirements on that to make sure that, I mean, I, I, to me, the fire system is the biggest piece. No, and that, that might pertain to all county buildings being utilized by nonprofits. Definitely. I know the preschool next to us um, operates under the same or under similar okay. auspices. So. And the VFW is across the street. I'll get with Glenn, but I'm pretty I sure. I know that Glenn handled some of that just recently because they went through that building and the one next to it because he knows he has to fix like a storage where they have the cleaning stuff that didn't meet fire code. So the fire chief has been over there and gave him a list of what needs to be fixed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's pretty on top of it. Okay. That's all I have. I went on several tours there. It's a pretty nice operation. We try to, to do right by the county and, and by our families as well and the public. How many kids are going? So it varies from year to year. Um, things, there's a lot of kids that have gone back to public school, which we encourage if the families feel that's appropriate. Um, right now we're expecting 10 to 15 this coming year. We don't start until after Labor Day. Um, we've had as many as 32 kids, and so we can ebb and flow and grow um, families are committed to volunteer time within the association and within the community, so we have good support. So as numbers grow, more families and um, more people are brought on that are, are qualified. Okay. 
Um, have you had thought, so when you first opened, you came out uh, basically like first through eighth grade, correct? Or it, you extended some services? To yeah, we don't per se have grades, but we do, that's, that's the age groups that they fall into. Um, most of those older kids have moved back into public school, and we support that because that's important. Um, they need that that interaction. So this year we're tending to see fourth and under aged grade kids, um, and so that's where the bulk of the kids are. Okay. Yeah. But it would be like an online service, but with whatever uh, instructional person would be, it, it would could we, be open to high school, a kid in high school if the parents wanted to accept it. So what we, yeah, so what we do, I believe the school district is still offering distance education. So if we get kids that are that are still, they're, they're doing their education at home distance learning, but they're not, they're not being homeschooled, but they're still doing compulsory, uh, compulsory work. We actually have a space designated where if the parents want them to come in and do their work, we are able to accommodate them, give them help, give them structure, give them internet, so that the goal is the kids get their education and they get through the, the work. So we do have a piece where we even, if they're still enrolled in public school, but in a distance fashion, that we, we support them as well. Okay. Thanks. That's all I have. Do we have any public comment on this subject? I have a question. Come on up. Um, oh, I have a question. Um, just in conversation with some other people, we're kind of curious as about um, if your facility and like Lander County Kids Club and Great Basin College, if those contracts with all of those entities, which are all in county facilities, if those contracts are all similar? Yes. So your leases with them are all the same? Custodial yes. services yeah. and maintenance? We do all the maintenance on all the county building. We always have. Okay. But and then they, I believe they pay utilities. Don't they pay yeah, utilities? Yes. Mm -hmm. well, state your custodial. name, please. Oh, no, Karen we don't Stewart? do custodial. Okay. Um, in terms of the maintenance, uh, we fix things, you know, that go wrong like under the contract. Yes. But as to maintenance also frequently refers to custodial services you know cleaning and that they do themselves and that's so all part of, of those do their that's own. part of their current okay. contract actually their current contract and the proposed new contract the only major change is the dates okay um that it was just a question that had come up in several entities and we just you know i, I just wanted to clarify that you know that people were sort of being given the same fair shake and you know that we were doing the same for all of the different groups that were getting um, services. And another question that came up was, um, is there space in the old courthouse for more than just um, High Desert at this point in time that other somebody else could go in and use? I could speak to that. Um, there are certainly, I will tell you, the utilities for running six furnaces in the winter is steep, but we have managed to fund. We start our year and every month with a conscious deficit, so we fundraise everything we need um, to provide and pay for the things the building needs, supplies, utilities, cleaning, and all that. That said, there certainly could be accommodations made um, to share space. Um, I think that there's absolutely, we're pretty spread out. We could certainly consolidate a little bit. So if there was a desire, it would be something we would be interested in participating um, in an effort of good faith to share the building. With kids involved, I would certainly want to know who and what and security. I do lock the building from the outside every day. The emergency egresses are all open to go out, um, but we do take security pretty seriously, um, just so nobody just wanders in. Um, so we would be open to that, just know um, right now we're comfortable proceeding um, with our current obligations, but if the county had a desire to split that building up, um, we would be amiable to those discussions for sure. Just a little, just a little seed. It would be like a wonderful 
place maybe to find some mental health services to come into our community. So if we did that, I would just want security. <laughs> well, yes, but I mean. I, yeah, that would be. Just so there's not commingling because yes. the bathrooms are shared, but I have, there is a space downstairs that's in a storage closet that is big enough for a bathroom, a toilet and a sink that abuts the plumbing wall. So to install a sink and a toilet and create a separate space, um, that that whole side could be served by one restroom or there's two restrooms. As long as we just were secure and we knew what to expect and, and to care for the kids. So more like an off, off, you know, availability for an office, Kathy. With, I mean, maybe this is something that we're, where we're looking at the discussion with the Frontier Coalition, not for distribution or that, but just to where they'd have an office and a, and, and a, a building to go to with, a, you know, a professional office and that to where if, if they're crammed there. My concern, my only concern for that is that um, uh, just from where it, security of that um, and not having people wander around uh, because you have um, and I'm not please bear with me you have transients you have all kinds of people from out everywhere and from that puts a little knot in my stomach um, I mean, you had that would have to be figured out how to not that I'm I, against I was uh, thinking more for those, where yeah. they could do their professional yeah you know just like, more like an about office the, space. The, well she talked about the cost of Eating you know, in the you know, winter time, and I'm thinking know, that would be really just nice some, if we could get somebody else more, in there too. I, I, so I wasn't thinking the distribution or nothing, yeah, no but no, okay. not where people are wandering in because it, it is kids. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same as a school. You know, our schools are secure, so yeah. you'd want that piece, but just something to help share yeah, the no, and no, give them some relief that that might open up some room for them. Yeah. So there, yeah. Mm -hmm. there is some opportunity down at the bot in the basement level. There is a at the bottom of those stairs that the short staircase to the basement. The second after you go past the men's restroom down to the bottom landing, that's space for a door. Um, there would be a, a possibility to put a secure door there. The ADA elevator is available to hit all three floors. We do keep that stationed and fixed at the top level. The bottom doors will not open when it's not at that floor, so that's just a safety issue that we keep the elevator set and locked on the top floor um, at all times. Mm -hmm. We do call for it at the lower floors if needed. Um, so that said, just know that we would be open to those discussions and would want to make anything work that seemed to benefit to the community. So. Mm -hmm. Is there any more? Public comment. Okay, we'll hear a motion. So I'll make a motion um, for that we approve the renewing of the lease agreement between Lander County, <laughs> Lander County and High Desert Education Association, located at 315 South Humboldt Street. This is a three-year. Lease ending on June 30th, 2027. August 31st. August 31st, 2026. What am I missing? Oh, is that where the mistake is? Yeah. It was amended at the beginning. Of the okay. So it's August, I'm sorry. August what? 31st. August 31st. 2026. 2026. We have a second to the motion. I'll second the motion. Okay. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank motion you, Chair. Sir. I'll take over thank on you, item, back on item four. Thanks, Kim. Thank okay. Uh, for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove, allowing Karen Jury for Janik, uh, sorry, I went mind there, to purchase okay. a bench and put in put it in by Lions Park as well as adding two plaques to the bench. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Karen Jerry Perjanic and Nolina Castellanos. <laughs> and I'm just requesting that I would like a bench uh, approved to be put into the Lions Club or by the Lions Park um, on the side of First Street, if we could. There's already a bench on the, what's the highway there, that goes north Battle Mountain. But I would like, or I would just like to request one where we could put two family plaques on the 
um, bench that have or were long-term people that lived here for a very long time. So, so it has a so there's the what state route is that, Ron? The one that runs right, you know, what is it? Well, it's North Street. 421. Yeah, so there's a bench right there. So, is that where you're proposing putting the plaques on that bench, or no. would you like to? She wants to buy no, her own bench. They want it on First Street. Oh, got you. Yeah. Okay. Across yeah. from the gazebo of Worth Nelson. Okay. Yes, Colt. All right. Colt Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get the wrong name. Sorry. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, for Karen, Karen Jerry for Jenick to purchase bench and put it by the Lions Park as well as adding two plaques to the bench. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thanks guys. Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Donnie or yeah. we'll get it all worked out. Yeah, we'll put a pad out there and everything. I'll give it a call. The so do I need to get back in touch with you? You betcha. Okay. Yeah. So me and I'll help you get it done. do you guys have a minimum standard for the benches or does it? Probably something that matches the rest of them, I'm assuming. So Sometime what? That matches the other benches. Oh, yes, park. right, right. We'll take care of it. So. Okay. Well, I will get back with you then. Yeah. Um, at a time, I know I'm not. I'm leaving tomorrow, so. Okay, whenever you get back in town, have an old, an old get all in or, Okay, we'll stop in the office. Yeah. All right, no thank you. Yep. Thank you very Thanks, much, guys. all of you. Okay, we'll go to uh, item five for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the reappointment of one individual to serve on the Public Land Use Advisory Planning Commission, Plu, Pluap which currently has two openings. New terms are from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2025. And our one applicant is Mike Knapp. A motion to approve the reappointment of one individual to serve on the Public Lands Use Advisory Planning Commission. Um, the new term will be from July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2025. And the gentleman's name is Mike Neff. I'll second the motion. Do I have a motion and a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll go to six. For discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the appointment of one individual to serve on the Lander County Planning Commission, which currently has two openings. New terms are from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2027. And our applicant, and I apologize in advance if I pronounced the name incorrectly, David Katlisa or Katlisa? So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll motion to approve the appointment to the Lander County Planning Commission. Um, the new term will be July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2027. And the, the individual's name is David Kulasa. All seconded. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll and back. our thank yous to both of our yep. volunteers yes, for stepping up for, again. Yeah. Um, thank you, Pat. And then when is our new one, of course, yes, that's which right. is exciting to welcome him to the community and on our advisory board. Yes, yeah. JR said that uh, our applicant for the planning commission was the gentleman that opened the gun store out here by the golf course somewhere. Oh. I think. So, yeah. All right, so we'll move to item seven for discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the site license agreement between Lander County and Southwest Corporation, Southwest Gas Corporation. Now, that this was on our last agenda, and there were some concerns about the time frame because most of standard county contracts are three years, 30 days out. They're asking for 10 years, so, uh, 60 day out. So it's uh, back on here for consideration. I do have people on the line for this as well. Okay. Um, as you pointed out real quick, I'll just mention we had this on before. The, if you look at number 14C towards I'm sorry. Sure. If you look at 14, uh, well, I guess it's 13, and you've got the cross outs. 13C, um, the licensee can get out from under it for economic, environmental, or technical, technological reasons without, you know, so. Uh, we don't have a similar out for the county, and again, it's a 
10 year contract, not the usual three, um, those are those are, are still problems with it. I mean, I can come up with language. Um, no one has asked me to, you know, to amend, come up with an amendment. So, from what I can tell, this is mainly for the licensee to explain their position. Um, I guess that's my main concern. There, there are other parts of it I think are fine, um, but the 10 years and the, and the no out provision for the county. Because, for example, if we, for some reason, technology changes and we don't really want to uh, maintain that mountaintop anymore, and if anybody thinks, so oh, that can't happen, well, take a look at what we've just been doing with the TV district. Uh, yes, it can happen. Uh, so, uh, especially in a 10-year period. So, uh, those things concern me, but uh, obviously, you guys can choose to do it as you wish. I would, I would want the same out that if we we decide for economic, environmental, or other reasons uh, to end the the contract, we should be able to do that. Well, my thoughts parallel or DA's thoughts is just um, we have a we have standard contracts for a reason, and it's just I think this kind of holds this. It's a little bit firmer than what we actually wanted in the past, so I, I share those uh, concerns as well. That's also, I don't think there's a hurry. My understanding is, isn't this contract in place, the current one? Um, yes, but they're, they are under a deadline because they're putting additional equipment and new equipment up there, and they have a certain time frame they have to do it, and they have certain guidelines they have to stick to for the BLM as well. So they have an installation date set. And they do we know why they're insisting on 10 years? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if line. it's the amount of equipment they have, if that's why they're asking, and because they're a big corporation, sometimes a two-year, three-year is hard because it's got to go through so many people with Barrick and Nevada Gold Mines. We have a five-year and then an automatic renewal with them. So we've been in one with them since 16, and it hasn't been renewed or anything for the same thing for Mount Lewis. Yeah. I would be fine with the tenure as long as we have an out. a fair and out. That's right. I, I just don't mm -hmm. want to be locked into something. Something for technology. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, it, uh, somebody on the phone that wants to speak to some of the questions? Certainly. Uh, good, good morning, Commissioners. This is Anthony Sassy with Southwest Gas. I'm Associate General Counsel for the company. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak with you and address some of the questions that have been raised. Um, as it relates to the term, I just want to be clear that it is a 10-year term with two automatic renewals. Uh, the reason for the 10-year term is, is what uh, the commissioners have, have identified. One, uh, it is a, a very time-consuming process for us to, to have to relocate if that is required. Um, so as a company, we appreciate the certainty of being able to know that we have that 10-year term um, where we won't have to be removing equipment, identifying alternative locations, and installing it on other locations. Um, in terms of the question about urgency, uh, as, and I apologize, I don't, I don't know who mentioned it, we do have an install date that has, has been tentatively scheduled for the 12th of September. Uh, so we are hopeful that we would be able to have this agreement uh, put in place so that we can proceed and, and have that done. Uh, part of the urgency is, is also access uh, to the, the tower uh, with the winter uh, encroaching. At that point, there, there becomes a point where if we can't have it installed um, in the next coming months, we won't be able to do it until, until springtime. So we are, we are hopeful that we can have this move forward quickly. Uh, finally, to uh, the, uh, I think it was the district attorney's uh, questions regarding termination in section 13. Uh, that language, uh, I have gone through the drafts that have been circulated, and my understanding is that was language that was already in the form agreement that was proposed. Um, if the district attorney would like to propose 
alternative language that would address the concern uh, about the county's ability to terminate. If there are change in circumstances, I'm, I'm happy to consider that language. Uh, but the, the candid answer to the commission's questions is why is I believe that that was in the form agreement that was originally provided to us. Okay, well, regardless of whether it's in the current agreement, I don't have that in front of me at the moment. If I know that I did not do such an agreement like that when I last did these things uh, at the beginning of the century, um, but back in 2007, 2008, I know I did a bunch of these site agreements, um, and we did have the normal early out. I appreciate their problem, um, and I, as we have done for other things, we've increased the length of time on the termination to say 90 days or something. Uh, we could easily also put in, I think elsewhere in this, if I recall, but I don't know right at this moment where, um, there's provisions for the weather, you know, that is the extra delays for weather and the time of year. But uh, I would suggest the simplest way to do it would be to simply amend 13C so it would say by either party if the party determines that the premises are not appropriate for, it, for its operations, for economic, environmental, or technological reasons. Okay, um, if we just did that, uh, we'd be probably in pretty good shape. Um, problem also is, it, oh, there it is, yeah, it's got 60 days overall. So you could do that or increase that to 90 days. Um, you could add other things. I mean, I can think of things to do, but I don't know what the company's open on. But if you wanted to just have us redo this and simply change C, I think that that would be fine. But my, my concern is that it binds future county commissioners uh, to this 10 years, and, and you just don't have a way, if the technology changes or for some other reason we wanted to put something there, we're, we're stuck with this agreement. Lake, can aren't you the one that's been going back and forth with the, the red lines? Mm -hmm. um, can they not just approve this based on the conditions that we're going to change that section and you give us language to Lake and that we can forward on to them to add into the contract for that, the buyout? That would probably work. You know what? Um, I'm, I'm fine with that. I am too. You want me to make the motion? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. I will make a motion that we approve the site license agreement between Lander County and Southwest Gas Corporation with the one change on 13C that will be changed for either party that will be able to terminate that contract. If Southwest agrees to this, then um, that's a confirmed contract for us. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Yes, and we'll take a 15 minute break. Conference will now be recorded. We're going to get back to the agenda here. Um, so we're on item eight for discussion, review, consideration, and possible action to approve, disapprove the reversion on acreage number 23 01 filed by Janet Rhodes to combine APNs 003-181-56, 003-181-57, and 003-181-58 into one acre, oh sorry, into one 
0.93 acre parcel within R1 single family residential zoning district. This was approved at the Jan uh, July 19th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting with the following conditions. One, add your ops to the map for the appropriate state agencies to sign the MILAR. And two, reversion to acres to be recorded with Lander County Recorder's Office within two years of approval by the Lander County Board of Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, shall we not for the record? Um, so uh, we have the agenda item is correct this time. Uh, so all three parcels are on there. Um, I did receive a letter from NDEP stating that they approved the map. So that's all good to go. Um, and other than that, uh, it's up to you guys. Okay. Well, thank you. I will make a motion that we approve the reversion to acreage number 23-01 filed by Janet Rhodes to combine APNs 003-18156, 003-18157, and 003-18158 into one 0.93 acre parcel within an R1 single family residential zoning district. This was approved at the July 19, 2023 Planning Commission with the following conditions, and that's to add jurists to the map for the appropriate state agencies to sign the MILAR and reversion to acres to be recorded with the Lander County Recorder's Office within two years of approval by the Lander County Board of Commissioners. And just for additional information, this is in Kingston. Okay, so we have a second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, I'll we'll move to item nine. We're going to recess the Board of Lander County Commissioners and convene the meeting of the Lander County Liquor Board composed of the Lander County Board of Commissioners and Sheriff Ron Unger. A, for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove the on off sale liquor license for Bear Esterbrook with Ex Potential Love LLC DBA, Austin Found Saloon. So we, uh, we heard this item last agenda, and there was something not verbiage dry, so we're addressing it today to take business on. Everything checked out, Ron? Yes, sir. Ron Unger, for the record. Uh, everything checked out okay for those folks. Uh, we don't have any issues. I will bring up uh, to the board that if you notice, it, it requires uh, three years of... Uh, uh, employment past employment and on the application it actually only showed two years we did the investigation on that and we found out that the employment for 2020 uh, they owned their handyman business but they couldn't work it because of covid okay. so i did that, call the office and ask on that because i didn't know if it would make any difference at all um well i didn't uh we overlooked that patsy because of the way the the numbers looked Okay. Uh, and thank you very much for bringing that to our attention because we did overlook that. And uh, when Patsy did make the call to the secretaries, we got right on the ball, and we that's what we come up with thank on you. that. Okay. So. Thanks, Sean. Do we have a motion? Yes, I will make a motion that we approve the on and off sale liquor license for Bear Estabrook with Ex Potential Love LLC DBA Austin Bound Saloon. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, we'll adjourn the meeting of the Lander County Liquor Board and reconvene the Lander County Board of Commissioners. Okay, so we've already done 10 and 11. We'll move to item 12. For discussion and possible action to approve, disapprove the appointment of one county commissioner to serve on the Nevada Local Justice Re uh, Reinvestment Coordinating Council for the 2023 through 2025 meeting cycle. New terms will be from August 20 or August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2025. So who would like to sit on that board? We have to appoint one. What is it? How often do they do it? Oh man, I, I don't know. It's like, it's a new it's a new it's a new yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah, we used to have art. Art used to be on there. But I don't know how often the meetings are. Frequency? How often they meet? Yeah, I'm sure we can find out. Uh, it's not on our board appointment list at all. So I don't know. Do we have the time to... Well, we... No, 
kind of we should have had it done. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's you're overdue be, at the moment. Pardon? You're clearly overdue at the moment. Yeah. So we need to yeah appoint someone for sure. How often do they meet? I, we don't know. I don't think very <laughs> once frequently. in a while. <laughs> if, if it's evening, I want. I don't think it's big time. Art never really said much about it. Yeah, we didn't even know he was on the board. Right. <laughs> you you could do it, night. And then if it looks like it's too much, we can, we can bring it back and we can reappoint somebody. Okay. Right, so I'll hear a motion. I'll make a motion that we nominate Mike to the position of uh, Nevada Local Justice reinvestment coordinating council for the 2023 to 2025 meeting cycle. The new terms will be from August 1st, 2023 through July 31st, 2025. I'll second the motion. Real quick, that would be past my elected term as well. Okay, so that's noted. If that happens then, okay. yeah. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move to 13. Thanks Mike for doing that. Aye. Yes. Yes. Uh, just for a little discussion on this, we did our. I did read that brief on that, and I would like to offer Mike an invitation that if he has any questions on this or there's any history, uh, as far see. as what the laws and because you're going to be reporting the legislatures from the way I understand that on the official and the non official side. No, don't. Yeah, uh, don't. Don't read too much into it. You're welcome in our office. We'll give you all the help. <laughs> Me with that later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll move to item 13 for discussion of possible action to approve, disapprove two opioid settlements. First one is Walgreens Exhibit A in an amount of $580,000, and 60 cents, and Tiva Exhibit B in the amount of $386,924.40 and authorize the county manager to sign. I have a quick question, but I need yeah. to discuss with you or Liz on this. I'm noticing and, and reading on a, a lot of these settlements that are coming in because it seems like everything has a you know class action suit against it. Is it put stipulations on it that make it almost impossible to manage with, with these settlements or does it come in with some guidelines to do? I mean, do you know on this one? Some of them, that, that uh, one against the vapes, it, it's money that's almost unusable. What they what they direct you to use and the paperwork to get the money, it's it's total control of it, and what goes what reverts back goes right back to the lawyers. Right. Well, I, I know like on this opioid settlement, the money that we receive, we use it for like education. I think the video that we made that we put out of the death of the mm -hmm. of the uh, juvenile that we had in our local community was used by some of that money, so it's... Uh, I think there are stipulations, but as long as you're using it, um, we discussed this, as long as you're using it with something that is similar of where you're getting it, such as we could use it as our community health, um, correct okay. me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and okay. stuff like that in the video. Yeah, we've used it for different, like the Narcan and things like yes. that that we've bought, but I've only had to do one report on it. It was very easy, okay. but I haven't had to report our financial side of it yet, so I don't know how that is. Oh. As long as it ain't, like I said, something that just has so many strings attached. The, uh, the Narcan, that, that's handed out by our, our health, health nurse. Uh, yes, okay. that's something. Did we ever go to the schools with that to make sure, like, all coaches and teachers have that? Because, I mean, that could save somebody's life if they have I it. think she supplied it community wide. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. It's uh, paid out th over the, what, 15 years, though, so it. You know, it's not quite right. the amount. Right. But, you know, Commissioner, I, I appreciate what you're saying because. I, I think this board is a little bit gun shy after the conditions that our previous governor put on us yeah. with the amount that was coming in. So I think we're just a little yeah. bit leery of, of what, but actually this is pretty standard with with what goes on. They yeah. just asked that we, we try to use it for drug awareness and things like that, but. You guys that do the work for fine with it. Real quick, um, it does have arbitration, just so you know, but all of these big settlements do, so. I'll make the motion to approve two opioid, opioid settlements while raising the exhibit A in the amount of $580,386.60 
and the PIVA exhibits B in the amount of $386,924.40 and authorize the county manager to sign. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll move into 14 correspondence reports, future agenda items. So we will be looking at the insurance yes. topic. And the natural resource available. officer job description. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just as a reminder, we only have one meeting in September, correct? Correct. Okay. And that is what day? The 14th. The 14th. Might we want to um, start a little bit early and put that... Probably not the September, but the October one. We want to be sure and, and cover our holidays, because I know people are making plans. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, maybe so we'll why not put it on in September? Schedule. Yep. With what we'd like to do in November and December. Um, anything else, guys? Okay. Kathy, you're going to put that on for the next meeting. Put what? The holiday schedule. Coalition. Oh, yeah, the coalition. Are we going to bring oh, yes. on that? Oh, yes. I wanted to. On the 14th meeting? Yes, please. Okay. Thanks, Mike. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. If there's no more, I'll move into public comment. For non agenda items only, is there public comment? Okay. I'll hear a motion for adjournment. Oh, oh, oh sorry, please. Jerry. Sorry about that. My name is Jerry Annis. Um, just a quick question. I came in after uh, public comment and correspondence. Has it, ha, did you go over the uh, wild horse um, debate in September? No, we didn't. We didn't okay. go over that. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like an update? Yes, please. Uh, uh, on September 7th, uh, State Senator Ira Hansen uh, is going to uh, debate a uh, wild horse advocate attorney uh, in Elko at the convention center. I'll, uh, I'll forward uh, the information uh, to you. Um, and also, that it, it, I don't think anything's going to become of it other than the fact that uh, it, it's going it, to, I think it's going to be well attended um, and uh, it's going to get the situation more um, more uh, 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 public uh, exposure. Uh, also, tomorrow, uh, I know um, Commissioner Waits is going to attend the NACO meeting, and I'm hoping that uh, they'll be talking about the fact that uh, what started here with the uh, de declaration of an emergency uh, with, due to overpopulation of wild horses now has, um, I've got conf confirmed seven counties on board. We're hoping to get a couple more. So uh, that'll come up tomorrow at NACO and then hope to hope to uh, um, take it uh, take it further uh, on up the ladder to uh, to get to the governor's office. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Is there any more public comment for non agenda items? Okay, I'll hear a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. A motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Muted. This